what is going on and welcome back into Barley Studios everybody. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's jump into this content here. Now this is video number two in this Pokemon Ditto diorama that me and my daughter have been building and sculpting and painting and putting together. Now this video is number two in the series and let's just jump into it. Okay, I want you to hit this button, okay? Just gently, gently. Ready? Paint this all right here. Pull it back a little bit more. Pull the little nozzle back a little bit. There you go. Just like that. Just like that. That's good right there. Okay, we're going to get up in those nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. well, pull it back a little bit more. Not, not right away. Pull, pull it back a little bit. There we go. All right, lighten it a little bit. Go forward a little bit. Keep going. Pull back. Push down and pull back. Hold on. Hold on. You gotta push down and pull back. It's hard on the finger, isn't it? Mm. Hmm? They can't do it on the thumb. Um. Huh? Why are we gonna paint this? What do you mean? Why are you gonna be all black? Some of the symbols are not blasting like this. This is just this is just the base of the rock, baby. Really? Wanna try again right here? Mm -hmm. Alright. Push down and pull back. Wow, look at that. Look at that, Elena. Push back, push down, pull back. Push down and pull back. Why is the thing you do that in a way? Because it's making air. You hear the air coming out of the end of it? Yeah. Pull back. Back. No, yeah, no, wait, just watch. My hands are slippery. Okay, all right, just take a break. I do hope that y'all enjoy some of the commentary between me and my daughter. I really do enjoy her processes and her mindset and the questions that she asks through the process of, of me teaching her just how to use some of the paintbrushes and air guns and and different layers of paints and all those fun things. Not just that, just also, you know, the design process through some of these stages. So sit back and enjoy the time lapse as I finish out the base coat of Mars Black across the entire rock surface. Now, throughout this process, I do go ahead and since I have some of that Mars Black out, I will apply just a little bit of Mars Black to the actual Ditto itself, just to kind of give myself a just a mental idea of where I may want some of the darker shadows to be. Some of those darker shadows do get washed out through the coloring process, but it's still kind of fun to just to kind of like layer those in and kind of see how I want the shadows of the drips to be. So before I start layering in some of those brighter tones and brighter colors on the Ditto itself, I went ahead and also applied just a thin layer of Folk Art uh, White Metallic Pearl. And it, when I shot it out of the air gun, it really thins it out a whole lot. Uh, and it's very transparent, but it does give it a kind of like a metallic sheen. 
I really did like that metallic sheen, so I kind of started to lean towards that with the overall color code of the Ditto itself. So you'll see that I really do lean in towards the, the metallics instead of the color shifting paints, which I had originally planned on using. So right now I'm going in with a, a dark sepia uh, ink. Now this is just a dark sepia ink, so it's a very watered down color, but it has a very vibrant dark color. And it's just going to kind of settle into all of those nooks and crannies over the Mars flat face. And just get start, it's going to start to bring up the, the overall depth of those rocks quite a bit. I want to just make sure that they have a lot of texture, a lot of, you know, just uh, variation. They're not all the same. It's very random. And it's just going to slowly build up those tones into grayer uh, tones before I hit it with maybe, you know, brighter tones of uh, burnt umber or maybe even um, yellow ochre. So once I get the sepia kind of the way that I'd like it to be, I start to introduce more of a, of a gray tone. This is a mixture of uh, matte white. Now this is a Warhammer paint, matte white, and also, also some uniform gray. So I'm kind of mix, mixing those in, and I'll slowly introduce more of the browns into that mixture just to kind of bring those, the, you know, the color tone down quite a bit. And then I'm going to go in with more browns. So once I go over this now with a darker layer of browns, this is a sepia, uh, more of a burnt umber, and I'm really letting that lay on pretty thick and watery. So it kind of just sits in all those nice, uh, you know, grooves over the gray that I've been applying. So it's more of a back and forth type of thing where I'll go between the browns and the grays until I can, you know, get the, the variation in the, the color tone of the rocks that I want. So before I start layering in the metallics over the overall ditto body, the first two colors that I layered in over the existing pearl and browns and Mars black that I had just kind of just framed the ditto body in with is a, a Windsor and Newton Galleria paint. That's an acrylic. They are both a pale violet in a powder blue both extremely beautiful colors they are a little bit of a more of a pale color but they are very beautiful and it's just giving me that base before I start to build up the metallics So as you can see, as we begin to apply more of the, the vibrant colors to the actual ditto itself, it does bring up the overall realism of it quite a bit. And it just slowly takes it and involves it into what we know as a Pokemon ditto. Instead of just a blob on a rock, you know. So uh, it really does start to take shape. And I, I do like the whole ombre look. So I do continue that ombre look throughout my metallics as I start to introduce those.
So at this point, I wanted to see what it would look like if it was kind of grunged out in my usual style. Uh, and although uh, I love my, my dirty washes when I spray them on my items, it, I just wasn't feeling the whole dirty, drippy look from the Ditto. So I, I decided not to make him super dirty. Uh, but although here you can kind of see I, I did apply that. This wash at the time was more of like a raw sienna type of uh, color. But although it is dripping off of the ditto onto the rocks and it looks great and it looks really good. I do go ahead and hit it with a heat gun just to kind of dry any kind of excessive drips a little bit quicker. I just really didn't like that. So I do go back over it with another layer of uh, pale violet uh, and powder blue just to kind of uh, blend some of that dirt out. And then I'm also going to go ahead and begin the process of applying just a nice gravel gray color a dry brush to the rock formations just so I can get some top color make them look more like actual physical stone rocks uh, that would maybe uh, belong in the f uh, a cave floor for instance where and that's where I'm hoping that this ditto looks like he is. There's a Pokemon card out there that, that shows Ditto on a cave floor with geodes around him. Um, I couldn't, uh, I did not link that in this video, but you can look that up later. And it, it just really is what inspired me just to show the Ditto itself on the rock floor with the geodes around him. And then, you know, I wanted to incorporate more of a realistic Ditto sculpture into it, as well as those glow in the dark geodes with the light. So. Is pretty cool here I am I'm applying just a, a, a dark purple um, metallic to the base of where all of the uh, geodes are gonna be uh, I, I really don't need to do this I just did it just because I wanted just to some you know just kind of complete those out in some way instead of just leaving completely Mars black all the way around uh, even if the light doesn't really reflect off of these metallics when the geodes are in place it's just it puts it's just me that does that you know it's, it puts my mind at ease knowing that I kind of put something there and that it's kind of finished out uh, and not just left undone in any way I'm gonna continuously keep uh, dry brushing the rocks in the place and then I might come back after this and I'll probably apply more of a dirty wash to them just in uh, particular areas just to build out some of those layers over the gray formations So at this point, really got the rocks really looking pretty good. I really like how wet they look. They look like they look uh, belong on like a you know a rock floor uh, in a cave. So I'm really I'm really digging that. So now we're gonna begin the process of add, actually adding the vibrant metallic colors to the actual ditto itself. And I did use uh, quite a few of these here. So I, I did do a color swatch, and I decided just to, I wanted to make it kind of a little bit of everything. So we're gonna do a very vibe, uh, bright pink on the very top of his head and shoulders. Then we're gonna go in down to a more of a, a lighter purple, and then we're gonna go into a light blue that cascades over the uh, lower drips and edges and the waterfall uh, kind of like drip effect across the front. And I will probably incorporate a little bit of purple, a little blue here, just to kind of darken it out over some of the, the existing drips and ripples, uh, just as I see fit. And then we'll, we'll kind of just add a color as we go. 
I just wanted to make sure that I kind of incorporated as many colors in there as I could because I didn't want them just to be the normal original pink color, but I also didn't want to make them a shiny either, like a blue shiny that you would find more of in like a Pokemon Go game. But I kind of wanted to have it in a, a best of both worlds type of thing. So I thought like a, a, a color shifting um, metallic with with a lot of uh, angles and, and movement to it, the lights cascading off of it in different ways. Plus the, the fact that it's going to have different color codes going all the way down the body. So they'll, they'll, they'll change color as well. And I thought that added a lot of dimension, a lot of dif differentiation in the color all the way down the body. And I really do like the finished effect. So sit back and enjoy as we add a little bit of color to Ditto. So of course I did go over these quite a few times um, and, and just to build up those metallic colors and, uh, that way that none of that base color is showing through and I also just want to make sure it's thick enough to where it looks really good. So I did go back over that metall metallics quite a few times, maybe I think two or three times uh, to be honest. But also during the dry, dry times, I went ahead and applied more of a, uh, a wet wash of, uh, of browns to the rock formations over those freshly painted uh, dry brushed grays. And I'm just going to kind of dinge them out here and there. Uh, and I'm doing that with a brush, uh, applying my washes so that I can just be very uh, detailed about where I want those drips and and little, uh, little rivers of water and, um, and decay and, and any kind of buildup of fungus and moss that I, that I want, I can really control where I want that liquid to send those colors and those pigments. So you can kind of see I'm just still building up those rock formations as I slowly uh, let, let the paint of the ditto dry and then incorporate more layers in.
So as you can see here, as I started to inc increase the uh, the paint of the metallics, you know, with more layers, I do start to lean more towards the purple around the mouth area. I just felt like there wasn't enough more of a rich purple that I would want it on there. And I think I had applied a little bit too much um, light blue, which presented itself as more of a silver. So I did apply a little bit more purple this time. So with the layers of the ditto looking pretty good, they're very beautiful as far as the depth of those colors. They're really shiny, and that's really the, the look that I wanted to go for this piece. Uh, I was also kind of comparing it to the colors of the geos themselves. I'm very happy with how they're going to contrast against each other. And now what I'm doing is uh, I've got the majority of the browns and the grays uh, on the rocks washed out and then they're dried. And I'm just using some E6000 and a popsicle stick to apply just a little bit of, of flocking to this, this base here. I don't want it to have too much, but I do want it to have just enough to kind of give the rocks some variation. As, uh, apart from just the geos themselves because the, they're going to be just two completely different substances you know one's resin and one is clay painted so i want to kind of break up that 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 look a little bit i also wanted to make sure that some of this greenery is kind of cascading onto onto the underneath of those rock formations to make it look like these these rocks have been super drippy over the edge of where they are the waterfall effect as it were and the, the, the fungus or the rock or the, the moss on the rock is just kind of going up and underneath those rocks. So I, I'm not applying too much, just enough to get by, just enough to give it some variety. And then uh, once I'm happy with the overall thickness of it, then I'll just do a, a really good uh, vigorous brushing just to get any of the excess off before we go into any kind of UV resins to lock any of this into place. 
I also do uh, change the color tones of some of those flocking pieces with some inks later on in the process. So you'll kind of see some of it will evolve over time just, just because I'll apply some washes, more of uh, maybe some pink and purple color shifting paint washes from folk art, and I'll water those down and kind of drip those into place. Uh, there I am actually adding some Morris Black to that and some, some darker inks. So I'm using some inks to kind of dye some of that, uh, that flocking just so I can give it different color tones uh, and just uh, variety it up a little bit, change the variety. There I am using some inks from the water, uh, my, my ink dripper there, ink dropper. And I'm just letting that ink kind of follow the gravity, let it do what it needs to do, let it flow where it needs to. Uh, and it's taking away just a little bit of that greenery, uh, but it's leaving the actual texture behind. Next, I went ahead and applied just a, a nice thick layer of um, yellow ochre to this. And it's not just to the rocks, but also to the actual flocking itself, which to me, that is, is so cave floor-esque. I think that the yellow ochre by Windsor & Newton is a beautifully thick color for any kind of um, uh, drips or nastiness that come with uh, stalagmites or stalactites. And I'm glad I was able to introduce that into some of these rock formations. All right, so with the, the Ditto's uh, overall skin tone or uh, the color palette of the skin looking really good. Uh, he's very vibrant. He's very, uh, very beautiful. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted just to add one more layer of just drip to him. Uh, it's really not necessary, but I, I just really wanted to give it something a little extra. So what I did is I went ahead and watered down quite a bit of um, uh, folk art color shifting paints. This is a light blue and a light purple. And I went ahead and I, I created quite a few layers of this, um, a few batches because I just didn't make enough of it. And I'm just layering that in and letting it drip off of the edges of the Ditto's body and then it's running down the rocks however it sees fit. And just like that we have an extra layer of drip over the rock formations and I really like how bright those are I like that they're kind of following the same color palette tones uh, as as what the metallics gave me from the actual ditto skin and I'm glad that they kind of match a little bit in some ways but they also are different colors so they just uh, it gives it some variety uh, it also is a is a good contrast uh, on the yellow ochre that I used on the rock uh, floor uh, of the, the cave there so I think that it really looks good it's subtle but it's just enough just to make it look all so good so here is just a glamour shot, a shot of where it was at this point in time uh, it, it looked really good uh, I was really happy with how it, it was at this point in time and a lot of these processes went pretty fairly quickly you know once you really know what kind of color you want once you really get the base layer down uh, locking in the details is really just the easy part as long as you have just a clear vision of what you want I really do like the yellow ochre on the rock formations you can see here there is one portion there which had broken free of the clay uh, and then there is a separate video that I posted to YouTube where I am making a repair to that uh, oven baked clay with air dry clay and then I also will post that in here. So here's the wooden board that we had. Uh, I had a kind of a, a drilled holes in so that I know where the the LEDs need to run up through, and everything is kind of lined up perfectly. And I just really didn't feel like having to uh, have a weak portion on the back, so I wanted to go ahead and resize that so that I could use that existing uh, thick, maybe like a, a one inch by one inch piece of wood there. 
along the back portion of the actual uh, wood box itself. So I went ahead and used just a small, uh, this is a half inch drill bit, and I drilled a hole just for my electronics. That's if I choose to plug it in via a electrical outlet, then I can do so with it laying flush against the actual shelf that it's sitting on. So there I am just drilling that hole out um, and like I said that's not anything really important as of right now because I do plan to make it more battery powered as of now but to get those LEDs to truly glow the way they need to it is good to have the option to have an electrical so uh, outlet uh, plugged into the circuitry if I want to. Vacuum and clean all of that up make my station neat again and then we're going to go ahead and not just glue but glue nail and then, um, and then we'll get this into position here. So I don't use a lot of wood glue in my workshop. I do use a lot of E6000 and that's what I used here. Went ahead and put that into position and then just to weigh that down, I put a, um, an engine piston on top of that. The engine piston has been, been uh, appearing in quite a few of my videos. It is gonna make an appearance here soon in its own uh, entire video. So sit back and enjoy as we apply some more paint. So this is what we have so far, okay? Okay. We have the hot pink on top. We have the purple coming down. So it's a little bit of purple tinge. Yeah. We have the light, light blue. Yeah. Then we have kind of pink, purple, and blue mixture around the drips. See how it drips down? Yeah. And you can see the texture here, right? Right. See all that texture? It comes, I'm just down it comes down. He's dripping down over the rock formation. Yeah. So we have rock right here coming yeah. up through there. We have rock all the way around here. And then uh, on the back, same thing, rock formation, right? Right. Some of that fungus and uh, ferns Look are kind of... Look at that right there. Are up <laughs> it's and, sticking out. Yeah, it is. He's kind of like dripping over the edge of the rocks underneath the vegetation. Why he's dripping he's on, over the rocks on, on the grass? Because he's just oozy. So the... He could be moving across the rocks or slipping down the rocks. And then we have yellow grunge and look, he's also oozing kind of over the rocks right there. Yeah, those holes are for the for the crystals, right? That's right. All right. So let's go ahead and Dad, get I'm so okay. Down. So you are Am so, I do so it? you think Am you I think do it, yep, Daddy? you are. So look you think that it would be cool just to do it kind of like right here? Um, let's do it all. No, not all. Okay, right there. Oh, I want you just to do it like, like, watch, see where I'm doing it? Yeah. But we're going to do it kind of spread out, okay? Okay. And then we're going to kind of come across, and we're just going to go. But what about? Just up here. No, nothing below here, okay? Why? So we're only going to do polka dots at the top, okay? So, do you think we should do... Why well, he's dripping down? Let's see what the color looks like first. so hard go slower go s go slower nope nope okay all right right here little dots little dot there you go that's a perfect one <laughs> perfect not so close though okay don't let me put any more right there okay all right let's get some right here oh okay too big right here no it's okay okay Right here. Oh, oh no, too much. Too big. Hold on, I gotta get off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, gentle. Okay, that's very good. Okay, 
put one right there in the middle. Perfect, look at that one. Right there where, where there's a gap. There you go, all right. Well, let's put some right here over his shoulder. Why do you have his shoulder? Oh, yeah, right there. Perfect, oh, yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Oh, over now. Get a little bit more paint. Get a little bit more paint. Very good, hold on, hold on, I'm moving. Okay. Okay, that's enough, that's enough there. Okay, put one right here. Okay, that's good, that's good, stop, stop, you're getting out of control. All right, um, put some right here. Okay, it's too close together. Put, there you go, all right. Good, stop, 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 stop. It's a little, it's a little out of control, honey, okay? Was... That was too out of control. Just wait. Not not too far. I want you to just put just some just right here. Gentle. There you go. That's a perfect one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. I'll put some right here. Right here. Just the tip of the brush. Okay. That's enough. Alright, can I try now? Oh, hold on, you got kind of crazy there. Hold on. Okay, I'm okay with that. Our dad's, dad's turn, okay? Mm -hmm. You point. Point to your point. Okay? Boop. One more right here. Boop. Okay, right there. Boop. Hold on. No, we're not getting out of control. Some of these are really good. You did a really good job. I'm an artist. You're an artist? Oh, that's the best thing I've ever heard. Can I be a, um, a singer artist? A singer artist? What if you sang while you did your art? Would that be cool? Yeah. Is that something you can strive for? Yeah, I wish I could be there when I grow You can up. do whatever you want to do. Hooray. Anything. You name it and I will help you do it, okay? Say, if you want to be a singer artist, you can be a singer artist. Hey, guess what, guys? I'm gonna, I, I am gonna be a singer artist. All right. Do you think he needs any more? Mm -hmm. Maybe just a few more. Right here. Right there. Where else? Okay. Just right there. That one a little bit bigger. Right, something right there. Uh, leave a little gap there. I always just make this one bigger. Why? I don't know. You, I think it looks good to have a little gap there. But you did a little. You left in your little. Right here. Yeah. Right there. Okay. All right. Big or small? Small. Like that. You think? I think that's good, don't you? Yeah. Can we do some stripes? I don't think we'll do Maybe not on this one. Maybe we'll do stripes on a different one, though. Yeah. Not this one, okay? But maybe we'll make a, like a um, a different Pokemon later and we'll maybe put uh, some stripes on them, okay? Okay. Do you like that so far? Yeah. I think Can that we... looks really good. I'm not, I'm not going to waste this paint, of course. I'm going to use the paint up. But... Can we make a, a, Pika a big Pikachu somewhere? Uh, maybe one day. And we can paint it. It's yellow like this. Mm -hmm. Got red cheeks, these these eyes, and this mouth, mm -hmm. this nose, and this eye, and this shirt. I put I put it pajamas on. And this this and have a chin tail with mm, one of them one of the stripes. Do you know which colors the sh stripes on the tail put to be? Do you I know? not. You tell me, what color? I can take, I can't. How many does he have? Stripes on his tail? Oh, they're brown. And yeah, he's got brown. See right there on his back? It's mm -hmm. brown. Sure is. On his back. You're right. So I, I will bring him back. All right, what do you think about this so far? Um, you, you like him? 
So some of these I'm going to go over with a little bit of layer of paint just to kind of blend them in a little bit. Is but it a girl or a boy? Um, I don't know. Dittos are probably just just dittos. I don't know. Can, can we make a lipstick? No. <laughs> uh. Some Pokemons have lipstick. Does it look like lipstick? Um, He's shiny though, isn't he? Yeah. But He's very shiny. Need, but you need a shiny red lipstick. Cool. I like it, don't you? Yeah. What do you think? Um, so, what about some on there? What about some on the tail? You want to put some pocket dots there? Yeah. Okay. All right. I want it. Wait. No, I said the tail. Oh, well, we're just putting a few. Let's do, um, big ones and little ones. How about just, like, just a few like that? Yeah. Just to kind of spread it out a little bit? Where do you want them? Um, right here somewhere. Right here. So, so they can go, get out. Okay, how about just a few, okay? Okay. Let's do, let's do a little on that tail. What, I'm going to call Those it. Those are kind of blending in. They really don't look good, do they? Um, it looks good. Love mm, it. You do? Mm. I don't know, baby. I think you can, can do it big. Bigger enough, big enough on that. Mm. Okay, just a few, okay? Okay. Does it look good? Mm. Mm, not sporadic enough. Put some more on his arm here because we put some on the other arm. Yeah. That looks good. That looks good. What's that one? Put your hand down. It's just showing the, okay. the good side. But there ain't nobody watching. Why? Yours isn't. Why is nobody watching? Because I don't have it on. Have them on? Mm hmm. But they're asleep. Maybe. I think they are eating dinner. Possibly. Because. Mm -hmm. Alright, anywhere else we want polka dots? Mm. What a few right here. Yeah. Those are a lot. Of I think that's good. We're going to blend them a little bit so they're going to disappear just a little bit. Disappear? Why? Just so that they're not. They wanna, We want them to look like they're kind of just always there. It looks like that. Black. For now. Only because it's on that silver. It's actually yeah. a dark blue. Yeah? yeah. We're okay. gonna I'm gonna blend them a little bit. So I'm gonna go over these with a different color. Oh you can do a rainbow or something. Rainbow's my favorite color. I love rainbow. Dad, can I have my fan tonight? Uh have you been a good girl for mama? Yeah. I think that's good. What um, do you think? You did it too long. <laughs> you cheeky booger. Getting good at work on the iPad, aren't you? You didn't turn it off. You didn't turn it on, Dad. So you didn't turn it on. <laughs> Alright, I think I like it. What do you think? Right. Can I pause the song? song, the song? Yeah, pause the song. Uh, I pause it when we're done. Are we done? Hold on. That isn't my turn. I think we're done, baby. Like, we're all done. I don't think I'm going to put any anywhere else. I think we're done. What about some right there?
All right, just a few more, okay? Can I do it? Yes. All right, so these dots right here that we had added uh, were the little polka dots are really looking good. I like that they're not all the same, so they just really add a little bit of organicness to it. And I had asked my daughter what she wanted to add to it to kind of switch things up, and she said polka dots, so that's what we did. So here's all the geos there. Um, and then also here is the wooden base here that I've already stained in a nice um, American walnut color. And as you can see there, it does meet my daughter's approval. Thumbs up. <laughs> so this is where it is at this stage, uh, point in the process here. I've already got it applied to the wooden base. And you can see here that there is a small portion here that had been broken free. And I do make repairs to that with air dry clay. So let's just run into the process of that so that way we can get this, uh, this little switch that we're using for the electrical system to seat properly. All right, so as you can see here, the wooden base uh, with the ditto on it looks really good. Most of that wood has been hidden away anyways, but I still wanted to stain that just to kind of give it some completion there. Now we're going to use E6000, uh, not too much, just enough around the edges to kind of get it to stay in place. Add a little bit of strength to the waterfall rock and uh, the waterfall ditto effect there. And we're just going to go ahead and get that put into position. It's not to say that I couldn't possibly ever remove this wood if I wanted to later. It would be pretty difficult, but um, and more so than the geos, I want them to be removable. So we're going to go ahead and make a lot of this uh, uh, interchangeable and removable. So I went ahead and applied just a, a piece of Velcro double-sided sticky tape to the 9-volt battery. And I'm just going to slowly build out the electrical system. Most of this is interchangeable, so I will be able to install an electrical outlet uh, connection to this circuit to make it a lot brighter, a lot stronger. And that way I don't have to switch out 9-volt batteries all the time. The 9-volt battery also does supply you know, enough power to get by for the LEDs, but the LEDs are quite a bit hungry because I use so many of them for more power. Which is okay, it's just enough to get by for now. And just having the ability to change things out in the circuitry is very important. 
So more than anything here, I just want you to see that I, I'm trying to keep everything nice, neat, and tidy. There's the uh, actual connection piece to the 9-volt battery. And you'll kind of see me time skip through this process here until you see the final form of the electrical system. Once we begin to add the actual electrical uh, LED connections here and wiring, it does get a little bit uh, uh, packed in there just because there's so many LEDs and so many wires. Um, and I do lead up, leave a little bit of excess on those lines. So if I want to repair or replace something, I can do so without having to completely remove everything. All right, so I'll go ahead and run the line, uh, the two wires for the, uh, the the power switch there. And although it was in position, it wasn't going to move. I just didn't like that it wasn't completely surrounded by clay. And it really didn't look like it was really well blended with the existing clay rock formation. So I wanted to re-remedy that. What's an extra few minutes or a little few extra hours of dry time for clay and some paint work just to make it look really good in the way that it's supposed to. Now I did make an end independent video of this repair right here uh, where I do quite a bit more commentary than I do now and it's probably about 11 minute long video or so of me just making repairs to uh, a broken air dry clay or a broken oven baked clay with air dry clay so you can use two different types of clay to make repairs and kind of remedy things that have already been baked. Uh, and you can kind of go through that, that whole video if you want to. But just uh, I apply the air dry clay. I sculpt it into position. And then I kind of blend it with uh, the same acrylics that I used previously all by hand uh, uh, to detail them into the existing rock formation. So sit back and enjoy this process. And then we'll catch back at the next portion.
All right, so I'm really happy with how this the this patch repair with the air dry clay is looking. Uh, it looks like almost if, if if it was never broken at all, and the the actual switch itself has a lot tighter fit. It's a lot more um, more form fit and hugging than it was before. So it looks so much better than it did even just with the uh, the air uh, the oven baked clay before it was broken. So I really do like that effect. And who knows, maybe I'll use air dry clay in this format uh, to surround switches and LEDs in the future, just to give it more of a snug fit than than just using um, oven baked clay and then just assuming that it bakes in the correct uh, shape without it warping or changing shape in any way. So it's looking really good and lo you can kind of see that it, it is separated from the existing rock formation but unless you're really looking for it you can't tell it's all very functional so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and get that put into position um like i said it's a lot tighter fit now than it was before and it, it just looks a lot smoother now, just so that you can kind of see just a reference of what my uh, electrical circuit looks like, it's very similar to the Mad Mike Studios one that I had made. All right, so as you can see here, it's just a simple switch there. You have a 9-volt battery pack. You have the option for AC connection, so I'll go ahead and add an AC power source there, but really won't need it. Uh, and then it's going to go up into that switch right there. So the switch is just simulating that 5.5 that, um, disconnect uh, that I have to where you can hook up either power source. And then we're going to run that circuit into an actual push button switch, which is the, the switch that we had just made repairs for. And then we're also going to go ahead and run the circuitry into the LEDs there. And then uh, we can just change the uh, the voltage of the of the, uh, the the DC power source there, and you can kind of see there it is working. Very simple, right? Okie dokie. If you need to rewind that and slow it down, you can do so. So then we're gonna go ahead and begin actually soldering all of these little nice neat little pieces together there. And I'm just trying to make sure that they're kind of like nice, neat, and tidy. And they just kind of hold themselves into position with their own pressure of the wires there. I'm not using any kind of like retaining clips or anything like that at this point in time. I do use a little bit of Velcro, but that's about it. All right, so then we go ahead and begin the process of installing the actual LEDs. I'm using blue LEDs for all of these uh, these uh, geodes here, just to kind of keep it all uniform. I do go ahead and uh, test all of the ends of the uh, the connections here between the metal um, uh, factory solder points and the actual LED itself. I don't want those to come loose or vibrate loose. Um, while they're put into position. I could technically pull these out and rep repair or replace them later on, but some of them are a little bit tighter fit than others. I will say that I probably should have used a little bit more tape during this process just because they were kind of hard to keep in position after I've applied them. But for the most part, it is what it is. I was able to get the job done and then the final effect is the same regardless. All right, so once the LEDs are somewhat in place, I can go ahead and begin the process of applying the uh, the geodes there. So some of these are very tight fit. So what I'll do is I'll run the uh, geo, uh, the LED up into the bottom of the pilot hole for each individual ge geode, and then I'll just kind of just push that down into position. I've just used about one or two dabs of E6000 for each one in case I wanted to remove them. It may remove a little bit of paint in the future, but I'd rather re remove just like two patches of paint rather than just having to completely decimate the clay to get the thing off and make repairs. So you'll kind of see me run through the process for all of the geodes here.
All right, so the last geode here is the one that's actually seated inside of his body, and that's the one that he's kind of dripping around. Um, and it kind of is actually a, a quite a bit of a tight fit there and the, the arm almost got in the way So I didn't really have hindsight in that because the arms were an afterthought of the clay process So I about boogered myself up there But I was able to get that in and get it uh, uh, wired up there And then we're just gonna go ahead and kind of uh, tuck all of the wiring into position here um, And I just try not to put any kind of bend points on any of the solder and just making sure that everything is up there nice neat and tidy All right, everybody, so here it is in all of its glory as we run through these glamour shots. I would like to appreciate y'all all for taking the time to watch this video number two in this amazing very first Pokemon Ditto Diorama piece that me and my daughter designed and built together. So although that uh, a lot of this was me who was designing this, she was able to take advantage of and enjoy some of the process by adding the polka dots and doing some of the airbrushing. And I'm so glad that she was able to take advantage of some of the paint. As always, thank you all for investing your time in my content. I really do appreciate you spending time on my channel and I really do enjoy putting out the content for you. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and let us know in the comments what Pokemon would you like to see in the future. Pokemon Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> it's done now. Okay, okay, we're done. Whoa!